Hey you all, my name is Adam Conrad. You recognize me in the past from my many Dukes of Hazard fan films that I had done in the past. And I must say that you guys have been awesome to be around. I got I mean I, I can't ask for better people than you all. I gotta go over something with you. I seen John Schneider many a times talk about this. Tom Moped and Catherine Bach just recently, and I gotta say something. The Dukes of Hazard reboot. The Dukes of Hazard reboot. Disaster. Why is it disaster at this here? This one did a little better than the original one with Johnny, what's his name? Johnny Cogswell and Sean William Scott, this here. Do you know why this here didn't do well? It was because the, sh the producers were never cast in the Dukes of Hazard to remake whatever their plans was, their ideas was at the time. They didn't do a very good job on the casting side of things. They had a couple of character actors cast it right, but not the majority of it was not that well. And in fact, you had people running out of the movie theaters, couldn't wait for the movie to get over, and couldn't wait to get out of the doors to the movie theater, and that's a, a concern. And when you see that happen, uh, they may not come back. And uh, me, I don't know if you guys are aware of it, I'm an independent film director. I would love to do a Dukes of Hazard movie if I had the money to do it, and if Warner Brothers was willing to sign over the, the rights to do so, because I love to do that, because that was one of the shows what I was brought up watching. And uh, when I watched their remake movie of the Dukes of Hazard, man, I said, man, what the hell is this I'm looking at? Willie Nelson was a, he, was, he played Uncle Jesse quite well. But here's the thing. George is seen he, when he had his pickup truck, a blue pickup truck. It was all right. Because, I mean, Uncle Jesse, I don't know if you remember Denver Powell in the first season of the Dukes of Hazard around the, uh, what was it, the second or third episode, he was driving a different kind of pickup truck. It was a white pickup truck, but it wasn't the same model as during the other seasons of the Dukes of Hazard, as we all recognize him from. That wasn't the issue with Willie Nelson. It was for the simple fact that he's in the scene smoking pot, and the Dukes of Hazard had, had I mean, it, everything what the Dukes of Hazard was was not in that movie. And then they got Willie and the Dukes labeled as moonshiners. The Dukes and the Dukes of Hazard, Bo and Luke and Daisy and Uncle Jesse were never moonshiners. They were uh, former moonshiners. Uncle Jesse gave his word to the USFA federal government, long as they don't jail these boys, Bo and Luke, Schneider and Moped, that he hate that Uncle Jesse and the Duke family will have nothing to do with running one ounce of moonshine, and in fact, he retired from moonshining. And the remake movie with Willie Nelson, two of them, the Dukes are labeled as moonshiners. And not only are they labeled as moonshiners, but the producers of these shows, failed shows, were doing everything in their power to make it look like they were moonshiners. When in fact, the Dukes of Hazard, the Dukes was never, they were never moonshiners. What other than that was wrong with the show? Bo and Luke, in this version, wasn't casted right. I mean, these guys here, what's his name, Randy, Wayne, and Jonathan Bennett, if I believe that's their names, they never, rep they never resemble Tom Olpat or John Schneider at all in the, in the film. And not only that, they weren't playing the characters of Bo and Luke the way how we recognize it. It was just too, too silly and too, too wild. Bo and Luke on the Dukes of Hazzard, they're original series was never wild people. They were tamed, and it wasn't on the basics of what the Dukes of Hazard was about. Uncle Jesse, which was not in the movie, the, he, the Uncle Jesse character was in the movie, but Willie Nelson didn't play him the way how Denver Pyle played him, the late Denver Pyle, quite well. Uncle Jesse, in the original Dukes of Hazard, raised Bo and Luke on the Ten Commandments. He educated them right from wrong, and it showed them morals in life, and that money is not the driving force in life. In fact, he showed them that love 
And making people's lives better is a lot better than money. Greed. That pretty much sums it up. And he also explained that Uncle Jesse would rather starve than accept government assistance from, from, from some government that's really not putting a lot of effort in helping the people who actually need the system. A lot of that happens today in today's world. And uh, when I look at these remake movies, I mean, there's one here, Jessica Simpson. Do you know why she was cast in this movie? I'm going to tell you why. Beautiful woman. Don't get me wrong on that. Because during the 1978, when they, or 70, yeah, I don't know, 78, when they started filming The Dukes of Hazard, the first season, Catherine Bach's character, Daisy Duke, was originally, they were looking for a blonde, top of the line, Dolly Parton, whatever. So when they're doing the casting for the show, Kathy walks in. Guy Waldron, Paul Baxley, they're all standing there. There she is, there's Kathy. Not only is Kathy there, it's just Daisy Duke. Daisy Duke came to them in a, in a form and in a way that they weren't expecting it, but it worked. Catherine Bach, I mean, I tell you, she brought a lot of characters to the show, like the Daisy Duke shorts. But she never overplayed it. And that's what I like about her, because she, Kathy brought discipline to beautiful young actresses, what to do, what not to do. One of the things that you see with beautiful young actresses in the acting world is you'll see the Playboy come around on this pose nude in this magazine. And then they'll get the attention, and lo and behold, their careers start to slip, and they faded away, and they're forgotten about. Catherine Bach never did that. She did do a nude scene. It wasn't major. It's a shot where she was topless in a movie. Not major. But she brought a lot of discipline and a lot of uh, morals with her character into the Dukes of Hazard, which I admire a lot. Now, Jimmy Best. Did you know? Did you know that that dog and that giggle coo, 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 that he brought to the show, he brought from home? That laugh coo, coo, is what he did for his daughters at home. Carrying on, he always did that. So this one day, you may recall the Dukes of Hazzard behind the scenes with Paul Baxley and Guy Waller talking. They heard him do that on the set when he had his daughter with him. They asked him, why don't you do that on the show? Bring comedy to the show, because that's what the Dukes of Hazzard would. It was comedy, and Jimmy Bess was a comedian actress. So he did it, and it worked. And not only did that work, the dog, Flash, did you know? Did you know that that dog, Flash, belonged to Jimmy Best? Flash was actually, in real life, Jim, Jimmy Best's dog in real life at home. So he brought the dog from home onto the show, and that worked. But the only problem is, like Schneider Wolpett said, when they were doing her scenes around the dog, the dog stunk fierce. They swallowed their pride, they did whatever it takes, they did the scene, but they said when they were done, they couldn't get away because the dog stunk. <laughs> and, uh, but they said the dog was a lovely dog, and then it worked great with the show. But that was another great thing that came from the Dukes of Hazard. is that when you look at the reboot version at Jimmy Best, now did you know? The guy that played Roscoe in the, this version of the Dukes of Hazard. I'll show him here. He was actually in one of the original episodes of the Dukes of Hazard during the fourth season. He was a bad guy. Uh, he was supposed to help a guy that was going to rob Boss Hogg's bank. And he's going to hold the Dukes captive at the Boar's Nest. Then in the scene, you'll see him in the, in the car driving with Jimmy Best's dog. And when Jimmy Bess is on his CV giving people the town uh, a notice of evacuation to leave the town by order of Boss Hogg. And Jimmy Bess said, I can't remember if I left Flash to Mama or Mama to Flash. And then when the, the person with Jimmy tapped him on the shoulder, that was the guy that played Roscoe in this Dukes of Hazard reboot. He didn't do a very good job playing Jimmy Bess. And you know why this hair didn't work? Because it was missing, not it was bad enough that they didn't cast the boys right. But the com the comical relation between Paul Sog and Roscoe wasn't there. Come on, Luke, but you don't get us out of here, will you? Well, I'm trying, but there's too much weight. Come on, faster, faster, will you? Wait, wait! Well, what's my being fair, don't you know? He needs your fat! It's all this water! Oh, I get it! Stop it, stop it, stop it, where do you think you're going? Just wait a minute, I gotta get on the CB. The relation between Paul Sog 
Morgan Roscoe wasn't there. Burt Reynolds was not the guy to play Boss Hog. Wasn't even close to playing Boss Hog. He didn't resemble Boss Hog. And the reason why he was on the Dukes of Hazzard that reboot was because he did Smoking the Bandit. Then expired Warner Bros. Let's go back and create another version of Smoking the Bandit, but under a different name. That was spun off from another movie, Moon Runners, which the way when you look at the Dukes of Hazzard, it's Moon Runners and Smoking the Bandit mixed in one. Pretty much sums it up. And when you look at Smoking the Bandit, there were running alcohol from one state to another. So you know the Dukes of Hazard, all oh, they're doing something very similar, but it's, it's, it's instead of them transporting alcohol, it's it's corn whiskey. Same thing. And a lot of characters from Smoking Bandit was on the Dukes of Hazard. Like the Boss Hog like character, that was in Smoking the Bandit. Uh, the dog Cletus. That's where Rick Hurst got his name from his character, Cletus Hogg. Sonny Schroer was on it. Uh, John Schneider was an actor, was an, uh, an, an extra in Smoking the Bandit. And Ben Jones was in Smoking the Bandit. He was leaning up against a, uh, a truck and a truck stop when Burt Reynolds was doing his scene. So. Now, who do I think, in my opinion, that played Bo who, who could play Boss Hogg and get away with it just as good as Sora Book? You may agree, you may not agree, it's up to yourself, it's your own opinion. I'd say Danny DeVito. Like the guy here, he resembled Boss Hogg in other movies when I seen him doing the movie Twins. Uh, I felt he did a great job, but I also felt that uh, he, uh, he could have... He was, he was just Boss Hog. You could just see it right in. I mean, he's just a short, chubby guy. No, he, he could do it. But did you know that Sora Book was never big in real life? He just had a big head, but in real life, he was never fat and overweight. He was quite skinny, and uh, he wore a lot of padding in the show. This version of the Dukes of Hazard and the other one, it was one disaster after another. It was basically everything but the Dukes of Hazard was not about. I mean, it's, it's these two movies are basically a spin-off from the other one. They're always fighting over the Duke Farm. No bad guy comes in town. Boss Hog doesn't hire no clonies to, to, to try something like rob the bank so he can collect on the insurance money. No celebrity speed trap was in the movie, like Boss Hog's celebrity speed trap. And, I mean, the classical race was there. Yeah, I, I, I support that. But when you've seen the jumps, I should have jumped here at the jump. <laughs> the jumps in these movies it wasn't realistic it was all computer generated and it just wasn't realistic at all stick your head up there and they go yeehaw no this is an interesting thing with the original dukes of hazard is when they jumped their car it was a real car going in the air and in fact the stunt crew with the dukes of hazard created a world record with the general weight, they jumped it across the creek and actually had a world record with it. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it still stands. Or Evil can even Robbie can even actually beat it when he's jump over the Grand Canyon with his motorcycle not that long, but 10 years ago, maybe longer. But, anyways, I, I think that 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 record still stands. I mean, the stunt crew of the Dukes has when it did that jump. I mean, honest to god. You guys deserve credibility where credit is due. I mean, if you guys are at home, if you have any way of, of uh, getting a hold of this stunt crew, the Dukes of Hazard, congratulate them, thank them for the hard work what they did. Because if they didn't do those great stunts what they did, you probably would not have even loved the Dukes of Hazard the way you loved it. So give them credit where credit's due. <laughs> But anyways, uh, you see my opinion of the Dukes of Hazard, and you see me on my Dukes of Hazard fan films where I created Dukes of Hazard episodes. I mean, they're doing quite well because of you at home, and I can't thank for a better group of people than yourselves. And I would love to do Dukes of Hazard, an actual Dukes of Hazard movie or an episode, but I can't do it because of the copyright thing, and uh, only Warner Brothers could allow that to happen. But 
I am entering the music business and we are getting ready to, to record the Dukes of Hazard theme. And unfortunately, I can't sell it because of copyright. And the person who owns it is quite difficult to find because the person who wrote the song had passed away, Waylon Jennings. So I got to say, is, you know, I couldn't ask for a better song to record than the good old boys. And I am doing other music besides that. But I had been in contact with John Schneider in the past. I got a, a movie coming out. I'm working on a script of it and the copyright of it it's called Christmas Comes to Town. It's about two brothers that don't get along. One's a retired race car driver and the other one's a country singer. And they got two boys among them and they don't get along. The two boys get along, but their brothers, the two brothers don't get along. And they got to put their differences aside because they got a truck called the Bluebird, which is owned and operated by a trucking company. And they got to deliver Christmas goods to one state to another to bring Christmas to a community. They can't have Christmas because of a global downturn that caused their community great chaos where the community can no longer afford Christmas. So the truck crashes and they got to figure out a way to get their stuff there when they're almost there and they crashed. And uh, the community comes together. They put their depression aside, their anger aside. The two brothers put their hate aside, what they have for one another. They overcome that and they create a negative situation to a good, positive situation. And they bring Christmas to the great north. But anyways, but the actors I want to play in that, their characters is Randy and Bo. But I wanted Tom Wolpett and John Schneider to, to be the characters in it. I could still use them if the money's still offer it. But it's we're still ways off for it, but who knows? John Schneider could say, By God, Adam, I like that. I may enjoy this. And Tom Wolpett could too, but then he could say no. But there's always possibilities in the film business let's just say that but if i was to film a dukes of hazard film trust me when i tell you this the horror the scariness that you've seen in this show you will not see in my dukes of hazard fan films it's right core to what the dukes of hazard is all about and when i made my dukes of hazard fan films i swore on my grave swore on my grave the chaos and the fierce stuff that you've seen in those dukes of hazard reboot versions you will not see in mine and I got to say is I couldn't ask for a great bunch of people like yourselves for tuning in. I love you. And I got to say is the more you like them, the more fan films I will do. But those are my concerns I have on those Dukes of Hazard remakes. And uh, feel free to comment on your on the, on the comment section below. You can see the subscribe button. You can subscribe to my videos if you want. And anyways, my name is Adam Carnard. And if you have any questions, you can ask me on the, on the comments below, whatever you want. And I'll try to get back to you as much as I possibly can. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching.